Welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of the Bad Taste Video Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm here with my, uh, I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> I'm here with my fucking about to fucking do a job fucking heist man fucking Mike as your fucking host, everybody, with the fucking shades on, dude. With that with the fucking vest and that the whole get up right now, dude. You're into it? Very much like Bostonian, I'm about to fucking do a job type of fucking thing going on here, dude. You're about I, to mail some packages, dude. I can tell. You got something going on. Well, I was I was just explaining to Grizz before that uh he uh he came over once and he knows and he remembered. But when I set up my studio, I'm like, let me put it by the window over here. Like this is the best spot, like acoustically, like for the shape of my room. But it turns out that that part of the oh. uh thing is unfortunately in front of the heater so i can't run it while i have my computer on or else that'll be bad news but grizz before we get into this week's movie let's hit the intro and get things rolling Vampire Vixens from Dude. Venus. The guy's name is Leon Head, Detective <laughs> Oak and Shield. That's what I was laughing at too. <laughs> let's see. I'm let's let's job. let's see what Leon Head has also been in. Uh, nothing <laughs> that I've ever heard of. Okay. Yeah, what has Head been in? Do tell us. Oh, uh, Leon Head has been in only a handful of movies that I see here on IMDb, but also Skyline Cruisers for Bad Boys Only. That sounds like like a pornographic Head's film. Been in some places. So close. <laughs> the Spy Dad, The Myth, and then Zhang Li Za Ren. Uh, these are, these could all potentially be pornos we're talking about here. I mean, yeah, there's there's I, no there's no tell. Yeah, I don't I don't know who the fuck. Uh, I don't know Good who the Leon fuck is Mr. watching Head. these movies. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a Ted A. Bohus film. Is that Bohus? I, Bohus? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but. Uh, he also directed The Regenerated Man, Hell on Earth, and Destination Fame, but he was a producer on Fiend, so a uh, that, that's a fucking bad taste video classic. Uh, Night Love Beast, that. Deadly Spawn, Metamorphosis, The Alien Factor, all these awesome fucking movies, Jesus Christ. Um, well, he made a pretty good fucking movie himself, man, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, it's funny because this is like a Don Doler, uh, Fiend and Night Beast and shit, like that's a Don Doler movie. And I thought this kind of felt like a Fred Olin Ray movie, right? Like you know, it's it, it could be like a Fred movie, but it also has a little bit of Dolor to it as well. It, it's it's like it's a combination of I think a couple different influences, but like the comedy aspect of this movie just blew me the fuck away. You know, we watched you know Jesus Christ, what was it fucking Vampire Hot Tub, Jesus Christ, Machine, <laughs> Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. one last week. Uh, and that was that was okay, but like I felt like the comedy didn't like really hit in all aspects for me with that movie, dude. But this one, every fucking joke was just like, dude, marinara sauce on spaghetti. It was, it was like the perfect combination. I couldn't ask for a like a, a perfectly a more perfectly toned movie than this one. Well, you know, it's funny. Like I'm watching this movie and I'm like, wow, this is definitely a Grizz movie. Like 100 percent throughout. There's tons of nudity in it. There's like yeah, melt scenes and shit. There's goofy comedy, like over the top shit. 
It's actually Michelle like, Bauer. yeah, it's like actually like Fucking a new JJ North. <laughs> this this feels like something that would have been put out by Camp Video back in the late '80s, early '90s, and actually it's superior, I think, to a lot of those movies uh, because it does hit on all like the like the comedic things and the um, the little one liners and the shit that they play off of. Like obviously, it's like like a sex horror comedy. Right, like yeah, that's what this sure. is. It, this kind of actually, you know, it reminded me a little bit of the a movie we just watched, of uh, that Vampire Nights movie. You know, a very similar, uh, yeah, I, I mean, could similar see that. In a way where you have like the, the the three, you know, sexy vampires, and, and you know, in this case, they're vampire aliens. We'll get into that. Um, but it was kind of like a very similar setup where they're just like kind of like taking these victims and stuff like that. It was it, it is very like similar like. Uh, I don't know, just the whole vibe of the movie. Like, this is definitely like the, how the comedy in that movie is the same. It's like the same kind of jokes. Like, they're raunchy, but they're still like, they're not like, it, it's goofy as fuck, man. Like, it's not yeah. mean spirited at all. Even the deaths are like fun and shit. This is definitely this, like a good time movie. This feels like something that you would see on like USA Network, right? Like, back in like the mid to late 90s uh, on something like oh, a yeah. Up All Night or whatever. Um, very. Uh, it's it's like a very entertaining movie to say the least but we are doing vampire month and uh, we have said some things in the past about different types of vampires and shit and we did bend the rules this week these are space vampires no they're not sucking blood they're sucking life force or something i mean in in, in the essence of what a vampire does this is similar that like it sucks you of your essence it sucks you of your blood that like it's um, they're kind of like similar in that way, but this is the loosest interpretation of like what a vampire. I think this name is only used here because it's fucking fits the uh, the rhyming scheme of like uh. what they were going for. Uh, I, I mean, I have to say though, isn't there like other movies where there's like space vampires that are also yeah, like Force. not really fucking vampires when it comes down to it? Well, like I think that's kind of like the cliche of being a space vampire is that you're not a vampire, but you're like you're like some kind of blood sucking fucking well creature. Well, well, like you have to suck something from somebody (laughs) because because like killer clowns from outer space, they're eating the people. Right. That's like the whole thing. So that's not like a vampire film, but they're still like collecting people and all that shit. Um, It's I guess like a fine line between you know genre sub genres i guess you could say um you have like the the space vampire thing where they're sucking the life force or sucking the blood out of you or something <laughs> and then like you go like a little bit over to like i said like killer clowns they're they're eating you so they're not exactly i don't know i don't mind it it doesn't it doesn't bother me in any way like it's you know same thing with like werewolf movies like you don't necessarily have to turn into like an actual wolf a werewolf like yeah, yeah. like i'm not i'm not very uh picky with my um my ratios of man to wolf man to dog you know what i mean <laughs> like, I, get, I get the point get a little bit the, the, point, uh, yeah. the the vampires the vampire aliens the vampire vixens in this movie kind of look like uh they, they got a little werewolf thing going on like especially if you, you see know, on the cover Oh yeah, on the cover there, like when they're like dude, the, the the transformations that we're gonna see in this movie and stuff, where it's like, uh, I love the way that they did a lot of this stuff because it's like they're not on a huge budget; they're not gonna show a real transformation, so they'll do like a flash on the screen of like a color flash, and then like in that moment you see like this transformation yeah, happen. Of course, uh, but dude, the the fucking suits that they made, the the special effects in this movie. When I first started watching it, and I've seen a lot of Michelle Bauer movies, they are very hit or miss. And if they're going to be like an actual horror movie or if it's just going to be more of like a a goofy, sexy kind of fucking movie and stuff. And I was worried at first when I got into this one. I was like, oh, this might be just like a fucking, you know, one of those throwaway Michelle Bauer movies. Um, But after I seen this fucking first death that we're going to have here, man, I was like, okay, I'm buckled into this movie immediately because it gets fucking wild right off the bat. Uh, why don't we give a little bit of like a an overall synopsis, I guess, of like what this movie is before we start running these clips? Yeah, these aliens have come down to Earth. They are alien like. They look like aliens. You see them in the beginning. Uh, they have these like a Mac guess, and me kind of on steroids. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have like this. Mac. They have this like cloaking device 
that they use. I guess it's their bracelet, right? That's that's like kind of what controls everything. They all have like these bracelets yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and their goal is to get horny men to come back to wherever to put this device on their head to like suck their life force or whatever and turn them into these like pod things which is also a hilarious thing when they're in the morgue yeah when they're in the morgue trying to figure out what the fuck it is but uh that's the general synopsis of this and uh when they first turn into women they have to get a ride into town or whatnot so they uh (laughs) They pick up this dude who's just randomly driving. I'm not going to say how they uh, pick this guy up, but you have to see it to believe it, I guess. And if you're over <laughs> 18, you'd probably like it. And uh, this <laughs> this kind of shows you, though, what you're in for. Because it's not as... Uh, from like the cover of the VHS and all that shit and the cover art, you don't think it's going to be like this. But it is. This is going on the list of Melt movies. So they're seducing this guy who everybody seems to have a convertible in this movie, which is pretty funny. And it's supposed to take place in New Jersey. I like see the <laughs> Yeah, so they put this thing that looks like a pair of headphones on his head. And he starts transforming. Just starts fucking dry, dude. Yeah, he starts like transforming uh. into this fucking creature. The head is cool looking, sucking in. <laughs> All right, like, oh, so it, that's th- what they turn this kind of like feel trauma ish in a way at some points, like the makeup and stuff like that. Yeah, like this could, oh, that, that fucking yeah, alien. you get a little sneak peek of the exactly. alien there at the end. It, it so, does. Um, they're like compacting these dudes into these like little meat pods, pods, who pods, and that like also is like a very like trauma esque idea, and it's very gooey. Oh, it's 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 like gross and slimy, and it really does fit that. So I'm surprised that we didn't see this as like a trauma release. You know, like it's I'd a very. It feels a lot of that, like the the makeup especially. Just it 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 has that like over the top like wetness to it, and just like go- it's goofy, but it also looks gnarly. Classic trauma shit. Um, but dude, like the the best part about this movie, in my opinion, are, are these three girls, are three like vampire vixens. Um, they just have like because they're aliens, they're not actual like these hot chicks. I love that they have like these like weird interactions where they have to like correct themselves a bunch and like it, it, they're just very awkward but like they get to the point of like you know what's going on so like we have like these like three like super dorky dudes well the one dude's like a super dorky dude the other guys are like, into the conversation that these three guys have on that fucking steps yeah where well these two dudes just start out and they're like talking to each other and he's like oh you met with this girl last night that's so she was like oh it was a great conversation and then, like, the other dude walks out and starts talking about how he hooked up with that same girl. Like, yeah, that yeah, same yeah, yeah. Night. I was like, yeah. oh, dude, but that's then fucking brutal. I like when they're like, did you call the girls from the bowling alley or the mall or whatever? And he's like, no. <laughs> did you? And he's like, yeah, they're busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> what they're, they're from new jersey and they kind of play up like they play up the accents at certain points it's it's really funny it's, but uh um, i love these three guys though these, these guys are great but this, this kind of gives you an example of like uh how like these aliens have to like keep adjusting their approach because it's, it's it's kind of like a weird thing man where it's like they have to zap these dudes with that fucking head you know gizmo when they're at like peak excitement and if they don't get them at the, the peak excitement moment, then they've wasted them and they, they, just, they only they, get they're, half they're the, no use to them. Anymore yeah, they, get, they only get half the money or whatever. Right. <laughs> that's that was, that's what they said. It's worth it to get like dudes with boners to fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> what a, you would be the first one in the room. You'd be I'm like, done. yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm going to pay taxes anymore. But uh, this is this is an interaction that shows that I thought this was pretty fucking funny. And it shows you also the comedy that uh, is in this movie. So these girls are in this guy's, you know, stolen convertible talking to these douchebags. Do you care to indulge in some carnal experimentation? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Lower verbal intercourse intelligence question level. <laughs> is this a party or what? <laughs> this is the best. Wanna fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they're like uh, space, yes, They're all dude. fucking looking at each other. <laughs> Guys are wearing like anime shirts. It looks like. Um, oh that's actually God. how Grizz and I first met. That's what he did to me. I was like, 
to yeah, him, dude. Like, hey, dude. <laughs> uh, but there's all things like that throughout the movie where they'll be talking about things like, oh, like, you know, they're telling jokes back and forth and the girl says something like, oh, like the girls on Mars, like people on Mars don't have fucking ankles, like Martians don't have ankles. She like hits her. Oh, oh, yeah, get, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Blondes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's really funny because like the whole time these dudes I don't know. I guess they're just I'm in really another world because there's these like three girls that are way out of their league that are trying to hang out with them and shit. But they keep saying things like that where you would be like, what the fuck? And uh, they just they, they, they are just completely like blinded by their horniness. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, and, yeah like, for sure. This, uh, of course, like the fucking nerdy dude, like is the one that like they single out first. And they're and, like, you know, he thinks he's about to have the fucking time of his life. And we get another like almost back to back amazing melt scene. Oh yeah, this, this one's movie. this I, one's I even like, better. It is better in my opinion. So these three girls are all over him. <laughs> There's almost nudity there, man. He almost got us in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they put the thing on his head, and he starts seizing. And just immediately flashes and turns into this uh, fucking uh, disgustingly wrinkled monster. I love the head. It just sinks in. It really does almost look like something from the thing. Just, and you just I see him like, yeah. that suction fucking face. Like they're just like sucking the air out of it. Dude. So, so this is uh, this is a first time watch for me. I've never seen this movie before. Um, Grizz has spoken about it in the past. I just never pulled the trigger on getting it. You figure it's like a later release movie, all this stuff. Um, it, it really has a ton miss, of, man. yeah, it really has a ton of those things that we always talk about where it's like, oh, like, I wish there was more like, you know, melt shit around. Uh, I wish that there was more like horror comedies that aren't just, you know, like scary movie or whatever. And like this thing has a little bit of everything in it. Duh. And somehow it just works. Like the story makes sense. Oddly enough. Oh, dude. Um, Speaking of having a little bit of everything, I mean, something that I typically don't like in movies, I absolutely love in this movie. And that's like the side story with the detectives and the cops and stuff. Usually I'm not a big fucking, like, it kind of loses me in some movies. I absolutely love this fucking British uh, detective who gets, like, no respect from any of his colleagues because he's, like, a foreign person and shit. And his like absolute weirdness, just I, I that entire subplot, I was like, damn, like that actually draws me in so much when it absolutely shouldn't. Like I should be drawn to like these three vampire vixens and shit. But man, something about that goofy Mister Bean motherfucker that I was like, that guy's funny as yeah. Detec- Detective Oakenshield is that like a, is oh, that a my- Hobbit reference? <laughs> I don't know. That, Could be. I fucking don't ask me. I, don't <laughs> uh, I, I, I like the scene though. We have a clip of it here where he he ends up meeting Michelle Bauer, and uh, they start hitting it off. I'll say. And, uh, and we the, should say that the the audio on this is you know the the, the the clip that we like the clips we took it from or whatever. A little weird. So like you're not like slightly you know, off if you're anything. watching. Yeah, if you're watching it or whatever, yeah. you're, you're you're good to go. But uh, they're they're in you know they're gonna get mugged. And he thinks that his uh, masculine martial arts, uh, ma- I can't even speak right now, martial arts <laughs> prowess uh, will save them both. But uh, we see something here that actually uh, makes you say, hmm, what's actually, what's actually up? Michael Oakenshield. So this dude's got a switchblade. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like Roddy Piper. A little bit. <laughs> Keep your bloody gold shut. What? What the hell was that? He does the fucking, fucking detective. Yeah. He's not with this girlfriend that he just met. And all oh, turns out she's a fucking alien. And let that be a lesson to you, you steroid taking Neanderthal lout. <laughs> I can't put my finger on who this dude looks like. Who the f- Who the f- I, the dude, guy, I know what you're talking oh, about. The guy from he Mystery looks- Men that plays the Blue Raja. I That's know who, who you're talking about. I have no idea what the guy's name is, but he absolutely has like a fucking Hollywood double that does like big movies and shit like that. Oh, Jerry Meehan Jr. No respect, I tell you. Uh, next week, we're going to be covering Blade, and it looks like we're going to have the hog on. At least he said he was going to. 
So uh, we'll we'll see, we'll see we'll about that. Through. Yeah, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Bad Taste Video Podcast. Dude, I can't wait to make you watch that. It's going to be fucking awesome. Um, but uh, <laughs> these these three other girls, though, that go out on their own, they start getting into trouble or at least finding victims. And uh, the one that I really liked was when the girl like pulls the gun on the dude. She's got like that laser. Okay, so- yeah, this is funny too because like they these like the vixens go to this bar and they're just like basically just taking every single guy they can out of the bar and fucking gooing them up in those little husk pods and shit like that. <laughs> uh but this one like it pulls up in a nice car and like she's like, "Oh yeah, let's go." And he, he takes her to this fucking warehouse where he like ultimately tries to mug her for <laughs> her shit. Yeah. So like then she gets pissed off because he's not horny. And he's of no fucking use to her. So instead of putting a little head gizmo on her, he fuck, uh, she blasts him with that ray gun. And I was like, dude, I love how this is. A con- it's the corniest fucking kill you could possibly imagine. But I loved it so much. Well, well, it's like it's corny because um, like just like the dialogue. It's a little it's a little funny. But let's let's let her rip. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Hold on. Here it is. She's got like this like fucking laser that looks like it came from uh, KB Toys back in 1995. I can get high. Real high. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's oh, this, so, this turns this, into a fucking skeleton, <laughs> bro. It turns into like a Halloween store skeleton with like googly eyes and with the like, jeans on. It's I got love that all it's the got clothes the on and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what a fucking what an awesome thing see like oh, it's it's amazing. funny because like you have those scenes of the guys like transforming into these like hideous creatures and all that shit but then you get something like that where the guy gets zapped and he just turns into a spirit halloween skeleton with googly eyes and Dude. his clothes on uh what a great use of like i hope they did that on purpose like it had to have you know, been right i don't and i and i don't like typically if that was like the go-to like i would be like oh that's kind of shitty but like for the tone of this movie the comedy of this movie it is the absolute perfect thing you could have done with that fucking scene like it fits everything so fucking well um like i just feel like every scene has like a bit of like you know we're moving the plot along it's kind of serious but then there's also aspects of every scene that are just fucking ridiculous yeah you know uh, even the I was going to say even these ones that we were talking about with the, the morgue guy where like, you know, th- this fucking uh, this guy who's like this, the doctor or whatever is like talking to his assistant. And it's like this very serious moment. He's like, dude, we don't know what the fuck this is. It could be fucking some gnarly shit. You got to be careful. And this, the whole way this just plays out. I was like, oh, this is kind of a serious moment we're having. But in the end, it's absolutely not serious at all. No, no. And it's actually kind of gruesome what happens at the end of this. You, you're not expecting it at all. So uh, with these this is like the comedic with the uh, morgue attendant. And we don't know what this is or what caused it. Everybody's British in this. What's up? But if for some reason this could be viral. Oh, yeah. And any direct contact could be deadly. So like don't great. touch it. Don't let it you. touch you. <laughs> <laughs> he walks over to the door, and the door gets kicked open by the detectives, and the tray goes flying into the guy's face. Dude, and all like the little bits instruments. of the fucking metal in the flesh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucking gruesome. <laughs> Jesus, man, I wasn't really expecting oh. that either. Shit. And what I what I what I love about that scene that, that as it plays out is uh there's there's a girl who puts in a missing person's report about her brother who didn't pick her up for cheerleading practice. Um and the fucking the British detective like brings her into the morgue and like shows her this fucking goo pod and she's immediately like, That's my brother's husk. I, I know that's him. I was like, what the fuck? There's so that's like much... the best line ever. That's his husk. All the fucking stuff with the cops is just hilarious. When they're in like the fucking police uh like the actual like building and they're talking to one of the I guess receptionists or dispatchers or something. This woman is fucking hilarious. Uh she, the whole time that she's talking to him, she's like picking her ass, right? Yeah, she's got a huge wedgie. <laughs> she's got like snacks in her hand too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of them, 
like now. Uh, except the day crew. They're all gone. Oh, except Greg and Paul. Let's play it on the screen in the back. <laughs> it looks like they're watching. Oh, no, it's a it's a I don't know what she that like is. offers one of the fucking like bugles she has on her fucking <laughs> fingertips. <laughs> and she goes back to fucking picking her. Head. Yeah. A, a funny thing, though, with, was that was her, though, in, in like earlier in the movie. Where the guy's like, so what are you doing after work? And she goes, sucking my boyfriend's dick. And like, <laughs> just like the choices of fucking words that they use, like the dialogue choice is just fucking oh, hilarious. Man. Like, it, it's. Spot on. Yeah, it's just like next level shit. If this was a movie that was released in, you know, the late 80s or whatever, like, you people would be paying $300 for this fucking tape. Right? Oh, and, I, and, I, and I love that. Oh, damn, yeah, seems to be on a camp for some shit. But, like, what I love about it, though, too, is that, like, it has this, like, that detective dude. And then he has this partner who's, like, you know, growing super fond of him. He's like, oh, I get people don't, you know, they underestimate you because you're fucking British. But you have a real talent and all this shit. And this dude's name is Jack Mehoff. And uh, I was like, yeah, are you fucking kidding me? Like, what? A, they, they, I think he calls him John Mehoff. And, like, one of the things that he goes call me jack and i was like you motherfuckers had to go there it's just like the absolute that's what oh dude jack mehoff there he is there he is jack mehoff he actually turns into a space lizard so he's been like hunting these vixens the whole fucking time <laughs> yeah so so basically uh this motherfucker Spoiler alert. <laughs> Ends up taking out all the vixens because he's also an alien. Uh, we find out that Michelle Bauer is actually like the, I guess, like head of this alien group, right? Yeah. It, it's it's such a wild thing, man. Like this whole like concept that it, there's like, because there's not, there's these three of them that are there that we see this whole time. But then we also learn that there's another one because of the the fucking the girlfriend of the cop. Yeah, the mugging. Or whatever, like that, dude. And, like, dude, when that reveal happens, like, when he finds out that, like, she's a fucking alien, I was, like, I, I loved it. Because, like, there's a scene before it where, like, they're going out to their dinner and they're at her place. And she's, like, oh, I made some dip. And he, like, takes a bite of it. And he's, like, oh, what the fuck? And, like, <laughs> so that, like, in this scene... He finds out she's an alien. Like one of his responses was like, "Oh, no wonder she couldn't fucking make dip." And I was like, Dude, that's <laughs> "She turns into an alien that looks like the thing from the beginning of the show Monsters, like on the family oh, yeah. sitting in oh, front of the yes, TV." Yes. It was a gift. Calm down. Gift from who? Freddy fucking Krueger. I love that. <laughs> Talking about the bracelet, <laughs> and he accidentally transforms her. Yeah. Cool. Told you. <laughs> Look at that she, thing. Huh? Jesus Christ. Blimey. I'm hoping you cut this clip before the fucking shirt comes off. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so this, she has like two antennae, like dog teeth. Kind of looks like a bulldog mixed with a pizza. Yeah. It's like the best. That's like a, that is like quite the reveal. When they, because the ones in the beginning don't look like that. Like they kind of do, but she's like the queen, I guess, of all of them, or like yes. the head. You That's know, how the top, I took it. The top level uh, alien or the harvest, human harvester, harvester or whatever. Yeah. But uh, she's like the top level one, and she does turn into like a bigger, more disgusting creature th than the other ones I do. Love, um, I love that reveal. I, I really did like, though, that Jack Mehoff turned into a creature that looked like it would have been at a despiser like they used the That's same a total despiser fucking look yeah, dude, for sure it, it they use like the same cgi like the same quality of like 90s fucking computer graphics I, it doesn't bother me at all i'm actually kind of surprised that they did it but then again in the beginning of the movie like on the intro and all that shit or yeah i think it was actually maybe a little before the intro um when they show like space and stuff looks like something out of feeders Right, like oh, it's you feel I mean, like you're gonna start hearing the, the yeah. CGI. But okay, this is the good thing about it, like because bad CGI can definitely fucking ruin a movie like this for me real fast. However, they use it like the 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 most heavy handed that they are is what we just saw with the fucking blue lizard alien. That's the most extreme 
and I and I get it. It's pretty fucking out there. But other than that, they're very light handed with their use of the uh, of like special effects. Man, they don't go too crazy. Yeah. No, you know, I like it's I a agree. couple flashes and stuff like that. So it's it's easy to buy into. It's mostly practical effects. Um, the transitions, yeah. you know, they're kind of rough. But it really, who gives a shit? Like they're entertaining. Each step of the transition, at least, is like fun. It's gooey. It gets worse as it goes, which of course we like seeing. Um, but like they don't use that uh, despiser CGI throughout the whole film. There's, you know, when the head thing goes on that they use to turn them into the husks. Yeah, it'll happen. A little there. zap, you know. Uh, yeah, like there's a, there's a few things here and there, but it's definitely not enough to turn you off. It like fits with the goofiness and craziness of the movie. Um, I really do think that this one is kind of underrated or at least overlooked, maybe because it isn't like an expensive tape. You know what I mean? And like, it doesn't really have like yeah. a readily available DVD or, or at least I, you know, I've never seen somebody like. Dude. Like I said, when when I got my copy, I got it on Amazon for nine dollars years ago, and it came yeah. fucking brand I gotta, new. I got to take the like sunglasses off. Seal still. Yeah, uh, I'm just like oh. Uh, <laughs> back back then, you were able to actually get these like Video Outlaw and all that shit, like all these <coughs> random tapes, really cheap off Amazon for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. That that was another thing that just got Let's blown talk. up, and and that was that. Um, but Grizz. Why don't you give me your final thoughts on Vampire Vixens ah. from Venus? You know, this is, a, like you just said, dude, this is a fucking sleeper. Um, it's, I could see how some people who aren't, like, really into, like, the goofy, goofy fucking, you know, horror movies would be like, oh, this is dumb and shit like that. It could be easily written off as dumb. Uh, but if you give it a, a chance and, like, really, you know, let the comedy fucking sink in, dude, it it plays so well. Um, it's a fun sensibility. Like you said, it's got everything that I would enjoy knowing that it's not going to be like a gore fest. It still has great practical effects. It does have some, some gore to it. It's got nudity. Like I enjoy it's got, like you just said, dude, it has all the fucking things that are like fun and campy about horror movies that you can get into this. No problem. But like we say with a lot of things, you know, the alone watch was great. Um, I think, you know, having a few people over and, and like, you know, really, having a good time dissecting this movie together and laughing at it would be a much better watching experience for sure. Yeah. Um, this was, a, like I said before, this is a first time watch for me. I don't really know what I was expecting going into this. I didn't know that it was going to be as comedic as it is. Um, yeah. I, I just, I don't know. I knew it was probably going to be uh, like a late 90s. I thought at least it was going to be like a late 90s uh, you know, almost skin a max type movie where it, it, it rides I the line. As much, yeah. There's a little bit more, um, story and plot development than something like that. But, uh, I really do think that this would go well, uh, with a bunch of people. It fits with things like Hollywood chainsaw hookers and all, you know, cannibal hookers, oh, all totally. shit like that. Um, that early nineties, like LA feel for whatever reason, this kind of has it. Right, like that camp video, like sleazy LA shit. Even though it's supposed to take place I mean, in New Jersey, and I be, I believe they filmed it there. Um, I can't see them flying these people out. <laughs> you just nailed it with the Hollywood chainsaw hookers. I mean, that's exactly it has the exact same feel to that yeah. movie. I, I I think they're very compatible. Yeah, I I definitely think this could go back to back with that on like a double feature of some sort. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. I I recommend this one. It's available if you just Google it. I don't know if there's any like if it's on. Tu I don't think it's on Tubi or anything like that. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, you got to see it somehow. It's out there. But Vampire Vixens from Venus from 1995. A better time in our lives, right? 1995. Yeah. <laughs> fresh off the Rangers, uh, fresh off the Rangers <laughs> Stanley Cup, feeling good as a as a young <laughs> delinquent child. Fresh off of the the Buffalo Bills three Super Bowl losses in a row. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> missing the missing the kick or whatever the fuck that was, right? Something oh, something like that. It. I don't know. But it's <laughs> it's time that we head over to the wide world of metal. And we have a, 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 an awesome music video this week from a band I've never heard of until you showed me this. And I listened to the whole album and it was fucking awesome. It's a ripper. Um, but Grizz, why don't you tell Lots everybody what we're, what we're listening to or 
watching at least so we are checking out the the new album from the band cruel force uh dawn of the x if you're not familiar with cruel force man this is a straight throwback speed fucking metal thrash metal band you know through and through um you know i don't know if some people might consider this kind of stuff gimmicky or whatever man but to me this is fucking awesome like yeah this is how it should be done super super talented the album yeah. sounds fucking like it's out of the mid to late 80s the fucking the, yeah the production on it is really fucking outstanding it captures what this band is trying to do um in, in such a specific way the the drum tone the way the fucking toms are tuned when you start hearing these drum fills and those fucking tom hits just stand out so you're like dude holy fuck and yeah. there's such a heavy reverb on them and i'm like dude those drums make this album sound huge just fucking massive yeah and they did a video right this uh song is called power surge yeah power surge this is a, this is a and great fucking song too. they did like a throwback video where you know in the style of you know venom and sodom and this all music, that shit yeah you know? uh so let's let's play uh, a little bit of that so we can get you get you warmed up just the look of it playing the bc rich Stack of Marshalls. Yeah, our way to go into that is so great. I wonder if that's his real drum kit. The whole like huge rack going around. <laughs> oh, dude, those fucking those fills just sound amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all i could think I of is that, that fucking guitar player like i've played in bands where like you tremolo pick and all that shit the whole fucking set and like all i can think of is this dude is solid Forearms. like be, like just fucking <laughs> like just steady the whole song that shit oh, gets yeah. tiring after a while even when you're used to it even when you're doing it night after night like that shit gets tiring and to be like on point whew, Fucking it's bad. a bitch you know i played yeah. in, i played in a black metal band for a while and it's it's non-stop and like if you're off of that trem picking at all it's so noticeable compared I, to everything else that's going on i don't remember did they have only one guitar player i think so right yeah i think it's a guitar bass uh drum singer dude which i absolutely love that i yeah. love like the, the it's a classic metal band doing what you know classic metal fucking bands do and just like yeah. ripping the whole time and dude the, this okay, so the guitar solo we're about to play here. Oh, this is it's, awesome! It's so fitting. I don't want it to be a fucking eruption solo. You know, it doesn't have to be like the like this crazy tech solo. This is in my opinion, like fitting the solo to what the fucking music is and making it like just badass instead of being like that dude's an amazing guitar player. He, he is, is an amazing though. guitar he, player. He does rip throughout this whole fucking yeah, album. Like 100%. there are solos that are fucking wild shit. Uh, let's, but this let's... solo isn't like a show off solo. This is just a show, a solo that's just like this is what this fucking song needs, and it's like perfect the way it lays in. <laughs> this guy kind of looks like King Diamond. Like chop. He does have that fucking thing look going on. It's the chops, man. I love that slide in. It's, it's the motorcycle on the side of the stage. <laughs> it's the best. Dude. That's so funny. <laughs> See, like, the production of this also sounds very, like, vintage. This is awesome. <laughs> do you know if they, do they always, do they always dress like that? Yes. This is, I mean, from their earlier albums that I've listened to and their, like, their early videos and shit, this is, this is the band. This isn't just like, oh, we're going to do this, like, throwback video for this song or whatever this like you go to see them this is what they're gonna fucking look like those right? guys definitely both like both all they all have vans and they definitely go to those meetups <laughs> yeah, <dude>. definitely a hundred percent one hundred percent those man. little mini bikes around in the dirt and shit dude. yeah like a grom you're like right you're riding a grom like around um i i, I this like album. this yeah i was gonna say i like this genre of music um to me it doesn't really get old because of like the whole like speed aspect to it and shit and like it's very hard to write riffs it's not hard to play at that speed um you know to write a song you could do it you know what i mean if you if you could play death metal and stuff you could do it but to write like interesting stuff at that speed yeah. with that chug the and like 
you know, uh, cancer does it like really well. Like, but this is one of those bands that like this guy fucking just comes up with awesome shit. It's very difficult to do. So dialed. He pulls it off. I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but I just, I really like this like style of music. And when it's done so, like, well, it's really good. Some real standout moments for me. Um, you know, this, this power surge song is, it was, you know, obviously great. It's the single they put out um, to promote this album. Uh, but there's some other stuff on here, like the Devil's Dungeon, I think, is just like like another. He goes in fucking super fast, but there's good fucking like mood changes to it. Uh, I love the fucking like there's the choruses that they put into this where they're not like, oh, here's like a, a big intricate chorus. They're just like these little like just fucking like shout moments of like three or four words that are just like perfect speed metal choruses. They've nailed that formula of like what this music needs. Yeah. For it to be like complete and like authentic to like what they're trying to do, they don't yeah. ever go outside of that the realm of authenticity. I feel of this throwback speed metal band, and it's pretty palatable. Also, like anybody oh, could probably shoot. listen to this. Like it's not like fucking you know you're listening to some of the death metal shit we're listening to where people look at you fucking funny. Like they're squealing and fucking yeah, like you know just this cookie is, monster vocals. This is even the vocals you understand what the fucking dude's saying the entire yeah. time. No, I definitely, uh, I dig this. Uh, I'm excited to see what else they do. I want to see if they have more music videos because I really like the idea of like that throwback style video. Okay, so speaking of that, dude, I, I got to tell you, like, you know, I've kind of like over the last month or two have discovered, you know, I, I feel like I would have been ignorant to the fact that these this even exists, but there is a like entire push of these new bands that are exactly this. I'm going to send you some videos of some shit that I found that you're going to be like, dude, this is fucking incredible. Like just younger dudes who are, you look like you you plucked them out of fucking 1990 (laughs) and are just like ripping like proper fucking like old school thrash metal. And it's not like, it's not like pussy thrash, dude. Like this is like proper old fucking like Exodus fucking Slayer type stuff that is like done with such care man i i i've been like having this love affair with this like underground thrash scene dude so i gotta fucking hook you up with some of this shit. Oh, yeah and, uh, yeah if we'll you're cover. interested hit me up on on instagram at kane enabler i will definitely share it with you guys also because man i have been fucking blown away so, yeah we'll start covering some of that forces in there man yeah. yeah um they're available on spotify i'm guessing itunes youtube everywhere check Thank them out you. Bandcamp too, damn. Uh, I'm definitely into them. I think most people here would probably also be into them. Um, Chris, I've been watching a ton of like newer horror movies lately. Um, okay, is that anything you ever like? I, I like. Do you ever do that? Like, just fucking go through some of the shit on some of these streaming services and just kinda... so. I do get some, you know, some some hairs up my ass every once in a while, and we'll watch some new stuff, but. When I do, it's never typically like just something I find on as I'm scrolling through like a streaming, you know, platform like Tubi or something. Um, it's typically not usually American. I like to try to find some like really weird, uncomfortable movies that I can watch and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, th- th- that's more of my if I'm going to watch something that's outside of my norm, I want it to really fucking like you wanna, push me to like weird places. You want it to shit, be worth so. it. Um, yeah. I uh, I started watching tons of new shit. Um, my buddy Bruce, Sutter Kane Rules, we always go back and forth because he does the same thing. Like whenever Shutter puts new stuff on, it's always foreign stuff yet again. It's always stuff yeah. from other countries. And we always give it a shot. We always watch it because like how bad could it be? It can't be worse than fucking sitting on YouTube for an hour and a half or whatever. Um, yeah, so, sure. one, so one movie that I, I want to eventually cover on here um he t- he told me about it and i've heard of it before but the movie's called baskin um it's not like super underground it's not a movie that like you know it's not like some of the fucking unearthed film shit where you know if you know you know if you don't you probably never will like one of those types of things uh but this movie man i watched it like fucking four times in two weeks like really? it's really that like a, it's a fucking like super cool um just I like movies where people end up in hell and like, I do like that too. Yes. That's like what this movie is like these fucking like asshole cops. 
like and uh, that was this like like how do you how, like as far as like budgetary like you know how does it look as far you know looks, is it really polished or is it oh yeah more of a, it looks like a legit yeah. movie looks like a legit okay. fucking movie that you would go to the movie theater to say it's just it's that's kind of like if, if if i'm gonna watch a newer movie i do kind of want it to be that because a lot of the newer low budget stuff is really hard for me to like yeah really no. sell myself into no this is a legit fucking you know it, it's it's low budget in the grand scheme of things um, right 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 but yeah. it's professionally done um it's from turkey which is pretty cool like you don't really see fucking okay. stuff coming from there but like now I'm like watching all these things like from these other countries. There's so much shit out there that we just never got here or like just it well, was like impossible I, I for like us part, to find at the time or whatever. Well, I feel like a part of that, too, is that like, you know, I, I watched, you know, a lot of movies from like that area too, like Turkey, Greece, um, a lot of stuff from like uh, Romania and stuff like that. And it, it seems like the reason why we're necessarily maybe not getting a lot of that stuff is because. I think it goes over the average horror fans like, you know, head a little bit where it's like, this is more of a movie you got to think about. Whereas I think a lot of people who are just kind of like, show me some fucking a killer, show me, you know, you know, something that's going on where it's like a slasher type of fucking setup or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, whereas like, you know, some of the movies are fucking weird, man. It, like well, I, I get into some of these foreign movies and I'm like, I'm blown away by just like the, the content of them and like how far they, they push things where i feel like american filmmakers have like more restraint on them or something or like more aspects of yeah. like being appropriate in certain ways i don't know i that's why i kind of fell in love with foreign movies they just are fucking raw dude did, did you hear of that movie when evil lurks yes did you watch that one you, yet or no did i it's i think i started it's watching it oh you didn't like it i got about halfway through it and I'm undecided if I'm going to go back. I think there's great aspects of it, but I feel like the problem that I'm having with it is that everybody that just blew it the fuck up to be this, like, finally a fucking underground movie that's, like, you know, the rebirth of what fucking underground horror films should be and all this shit. I wouldn't go and, that far. I've seen a lot of this, dude. So, like, I think because I had that already in my head going into it. You were already like, were fucking... Too high, yeah. too high I, my, of uh, my expectations. Were, yeah, we're yeah. fucked. You know, I I think I was like finally something Bro, cool, and it just didn't hit me enough yet. I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna you would like Baskin. Yeah, you I'm would talking like this, it. brother. Yeah, it's. I'm like, gonna come back next week with a review of Baskin for you, dude. It's I'll like, watch it this week. It's like one of those movies where like it's got like the fucking weird naked hell people covered in fucking nice. blood and shit like crazy okay. there's a lot of like fucking crazy violence in it and stuff like it's cool and it like i mean because we're americans and all that shit we don't really know like their superstitions and their folklore and stuff it's connect like after you watch the movie you google baskin turkish folklore and like everything makes a little that. bit i love that nice, a little nice, bit nice. more sense like it's more but like they use all sorts of shit like that it's really just a fucking I cool do. movie man I do love movies based on, like, you know, um, like you were just saying, folklore, like, that's, like, based in, like, certain cultures and stuff like that, or, like, I think those are some of the most unique fucking fun movies, because they're, they're foreign to us, obviously, you know, like, they're, they're stories that we're not familiar with, they're these creatures, like you're saying, yeah, like, this fucking one, like, now, man, that are, like, we're not familiar with the lore, so to, like, have this fresh thing put out there is always so fun for me, I, yeah, I think that's draws me in about a lot of that stuff yeah you get a chance to go in and like fucking you know now you're gonna go look into all this folklore and all that stuff it gives you like another thing to do um there's just so much cool shit coming out and i feel like there was like a dead spot like where just we we weren't getting good like legit horror movies right like everything was like super polished and then it was like super safe and it wasn't really what we were into but then like you know people now are able to get like better equipment for less amounts of money. And now we're getting these super polished fucking like legit horror films. Again, things that make well, you fucking uncomfortable to watch things that really are like, you know, on that next level of gore and violence and everything. It's pretty crazy. It's cool. Kind of falling into that same note, you know, recently I, I've been, you know, trying to, to rewatch some of the movies from, you know, my teenage years 
that I've kind of written off is like, you know, I talked about it last time where I watched Scream and I was like, I've totally kind of misjudged Scream for the longest time just because I thought it was fucking cool as shit on Scream or whatever. But like, it's, it's, it's got its own merit. It's got a lot of great things about that fucking movie now that it has a lot of rewatchability. So I've been watching a lot of these kind of movies. And uh, recently, man, I, I got back into to watching the first Saw movie. And first Saw I is great. Totally, so is the second. I have a totally different, you know, viewpoint of watching that movie now where I'm like, holy shit, this is such a low budget movie. It, it's it's all filmed basically on one fucking set. You know, like the only mm-hmm. and from what I understand, like James Wan took no fucking salary decided to just take a percentage if it did good and shit like that. And like, it, it's crazy watching it now that like, there's all this filler fucking footage of just like camera B roll and stuff that just fills up time that it was really a fucking run and gun low budget movie that to me, looking back on it, I was like, Oh, saws this giant fucking Hollywood oh, man. You know, fucking movie. It's you almost know, Danny like Glover, Carrie Ellis and shit like that. But they didn't dude. They were in it for like, dude, what Danny Glover has like fucking, the tiniest fucking part in yeah, that movie. Yeah, yeah. So his part is he's like he's awesome in that movie. But like it's it's great. cool his because it's almost too. it's almost like an anthology where like you get the story of each person that's put in the trap and then there's the wraparound 100%. story of the cops trying to catch jigsaw the jigsaw Dude, killer and everything. Like I never even looked at it that way, but it is probably like the most open faced anthology series you could ever possibly make. Yeah. It's an anthology right out in front of the main story without like really cutting away to like other stories it yeah. just gives you these fuck dude that's fucking awesome yeah. that's, that makes me even like that series even more yeah dude. although they do get kind of shitty as you know they get into them i think like you said the first two i think you run out of ideas after a while i feel like uh by the time you get to like five six you're making seven, copycats eight. and shit you're you fuck yeah yourself, I, you know? unless you're you friday the, the 13th you know just, yeah that's what i was gonna say I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Some, of those work, some of those work later on but you know that's neither here nor there but grizz i think that's just gonna uh, uh think that's gonna wrap it up for us this week i'm so all too. excited um you can catch us every tuesday night at 9 p.m eastern standard time on our youtube channel youtube.com slash at video podcast uh we are excited next week to have the hog on here uh oh. at jerry Meehan jr to discuss blade yes the wesley snipes movie we're going a little bit newer again um we want to show grizz a great time he's never seen it uh oh, <laughs> i think he's gonna like it i think he is gonna think fucking so. like we'll it see. but grizz where can they find you on the internet you can find me on instagram at kane underscore enabler and you could find me at bad taste video and you can find everything we do at www.badtastevideo.com please subscribe to our youtube page youtube.com uh, slash at bad taste video podcast. I want to thank everybody for coming in the chat. I want to thank everybody for listening at home. I want to thank everybody who's watching on YouTube after the fact. We'll see you next week with Blade. I, I feel like I got to do techno as we as we leave. Serious fucking beats going on here, dude.